I want to dig a little deeper into this, bro, because I think there's things that uh people aren't aware of as much when it comes to like Pyometra, right? Yeah. Um, a few things is I get a lot of questions in regards to Pyo is open or closed. Um, is it a Pyo? episode is sponsored by the beast of the east dog show come join us and see some of the best dogs in the country meet world-renowned breeders there's going to be working events two abkc sanctioned shows and so much more november 4th 2023 at 10 3000 courthouse road chesterfield virginia don't miss the event of the year we'll see you there so a lot of times they'd be like well, i bred my dog three days ago i think she got a pile it's physically impossible it's physically impossible to have a pile three days after you bred the dog. I mean, it's just. I hear a lot of people say, like, for example, most recently, um, I heard of a gentleman that came to me and he told me, yo, I went to so-and-so. And after he AI'd my dog, he gave my female a pile. He can't give a dog a pile. <laughs> she gives it to herself. It's a, it's, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You know, she, you can't get, I've heard it in the past. Oh, you gave my dog, but you used a dirty syringe or a dirty pipette. I, okay, so how do people who use brand new pipettes like you and I every single time, How I can't give a dog a pile, you know what I mean? And if that was the case, what's the difference between an open and enclosed? Yep. Like, oh, you used the eight inch, so she got a closed? So, so, so let's, 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 let's backtrack, right? So let's, let's explain for people who may not know a pi what a pyometra ac actually is. So, textbook answer is it's an infection of the uterus. Yep, exactly. Um, I think like the, the, from what I remember, like the, the, the definition I think is actually like a pus filled uterus. If I'm, if I'm correct, like it, it, yeah, it's, it's it is a pus. Big, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I think like a pus filled uterus. Um, Looks like tomato soup when it comes out. Oh, yeah, it's disgusting, disgusting. And and it's one of those things that when you see it, you need to act relatively quickly because of the fact that, you know, it can be life threatening. So now, other than explaining what the pile is, let's backtrack and explain to them. So how does how does a dog get pyometra? They give it to themselves. It could be a chemical imbalance, a hormone imbalance. Um, you know, if a dog pulls, we're right outside of it. And it, it never comes out. And when it opens up, it goes in, you know what I mean? And then it, it gets stuck in there. That nasty, disgusting blood goes into the cervix or the uterus. I, I, I would get up where the damn semen would go, you know what I mean? Listen, yeah. I'm honest, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that nasty, you know, pus, basically, this, the blood is just gross, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. stay on blood. Uh, and then it, was, it can go in. So, and that's where you don't want it to go. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. And, and, and that's why, like, I mean, I've done the videos, you know, on breeders hacks where I've actually, I mean, I had, yeah. a, Frenchie, I had a Frenchie, she was pulling. Seen blood. It. That was nasty, <laughs> Bro, like 70 cc's of blood in a 20 pound Frenchie. Crazy. Yeah. But exactly what you're saying that, yep. And, and I read the same exact thing that that blood, that pulling blood could actually, uh, it can potentially turn into a pyometra. So um, as you said, I think that's and the other thing. That, and the other thing that people don't understand is blood kills semen. So if you just leave it there anyway, that blood's just going to kill that semen. Now it's, uh, you're going to have your 1% people here. Going, it don't kill semen. It kills semen. Yes, it does. It still doesn't kill when you have a million or a billion. It ain't gonna kill all of them. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But the thing is, breeding it's breeding dogs is a, it's a number game. It's an odds game. So you want to have as many of them, the numbers in your favor. So if you have it to where you got good clean female and good semen going in, the numbers are in your favor. But if you got a, you know all that blood in there, she's killing half of the dang semen. I mean, you you hurt yourself, not not us. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. I agree 1000%. And that's why like what we've talked about with flushing the females and, and, you know, using, um, you know, whether it's different types of extenders or whatever the case may be to, to, to flush well, in large animals, when they breed them, they flush them with either penicillin or, um, uh, ivermectin. I'm not ivermectin. Um, um, um and, and refloxin like yeah. large animals, like cattle, they flush them before they inseminate them. And, and just so, so 
Oh, I was just going to say, and just some food for thought, because we've talked about this as well with the enteroflaxin. Before you start going doing this on the, on your dogs, you got to make sure that stuff like that has to be uh, diluted and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, just guys be mindful. That's why I tell people to, that's why I tell people to use um, extender with antibiotics in it. It has yeah. antibiotics. It has penicillin and genomycin for the most part. Yep. I mean, both of them can go in there and both of them will flush it out. And it's a lot. I'd rather have extender in her than that nasty blood in her. Oh, 100%. 100%. And I mean, you can see like when you're flushing them, I mean, uh, when you first do it, it's dark blood coming out and you keep doing it until it starts getting clear, you know, and, and, and how it should be. And I have a before and after video and it, it was like, it was crazy. Her walls looked like Told you. Be clean, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. And, and so those things can lead to a pile, you know what I mean? Exactly. So so back to the pyometra, right? So now um, we've identified what it is, what causes it. So now um, when a dog has pyometra, I guess let's go into the symptoms, right? So what are the symptoms that we're going to see other than maybe that nasty discharge that's going to come out of her vulva? Um, Normally, you don't see any symptoms to about week three. For the most part, the, you know, textbook answer says three to four weeks. That's what the textbook answer tells you. Um, I've had dogs, this before you see symptoms, and that's going to be loss of appetite, uh, fever, you know, uh, lethargic. You know, these are the things that you should pay attention to as dog breeders anyway. Anytime, like I just had a dog today, didn't eat his food. I immediately... Bro, I, I bullshit you not. Look, I immediately, boom, I came inside to get the thermometer to make sure he don't have a fever. I checked his uh, capillary response when you lift up his gums and you push on it and see how fast the blood comes back. Uh, you know, I take, I let him out to see if he's play for. Is he lethargic? All right, well, cool. Nothing's, I don't see any reason why he didn't eat. Well, maybe he just didn't feel like eating today, you know? Yeah. So these are the same things that you should do with the dog if you feel, you see her not eating. Okay. I understand some dogs get morning sickness. I've seen it. Okay, well, let me take her, let me take her temperature. Boom, she has a fever. All right, now I have concern. Either you need to take her to the vet and see if you have an open or a closed. If she has a discharge that looks like nasty tomato soup and it smells like, I mean, it smells like dead fish from last week. Um, yeah. yeah, it stinks, bro. So, and if you have those symptoms, I highly recommend you take her to the vet and get it a diagnosis. You know what I mean? People come to me all the time and ask me, like, if, if I think there's something wrong with the dog or whatever the case it may be. And I mean, one of the number one things I tell them, take the temperature of the dog. Like, I think people sleep on that so much. That's something you can easily do at home. Get yourself a thermometer from CVS. Run up real quick. Even if you don't have one, run to Walgreens real quick up the street. Get you a quick one, though. The Good which one does 10 seconds. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I've seen some people that use the... <laughs> I've never heard of it working. I've seen some people try to no, use it. Uh, my wife will testify. I had a gentleman, if he's watching, I'm sorry. I won't <laughs> say the name. Dude, he called me back and said, yo, her temperature's 78 degrees. I said, damn, she did. Yeah. He's like, where do you put it at? I like, where you mean, where do you get core temperature from? Oh, I put it in her vagina. I'm like, well, damn, that ain't that one. You know what I mean? Like, bro, yeah, yeah it goes rectally. You take a rectal. And then the funny part is these people, if they ever paid attention when they went to the vet, the vet does this. He asks you a question. What do you think your concern is? Boom. I think she might have a pyometria or something. She's not eating. You're yeah. telling on yourself. She's not eating. She's not drinking. She's not herself anymore. First thing he does is he gets a thermometer. He checks her temperature. She yeah. has a fever. The third, second thing he going to do, he going to draw some blood and he going to see if her white blood count or red blood counts out of whack. And then boom, he knows that she has an infection. The third thing he going to do, if it's a pyometria, her white count's going to come through the roof uh, and he's going to flip her over and do a sonogram. He's, he's going to look for a big, large gray mass. And, and he's going to, he's going to tell you, I think she's got a pile. And, and, if you what he's gonna and if you have your own ultrasound machine, then you can check that yourself, you know? Um, if you know what you're looking for, it looks like a large gray mass. Yeah, I've seen it like once. I've seen it once, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough that it wasn't my dog, but I've only seen it once on my own ultrasound machines. But yeah, yeah. It, it's exactly that because you're just looking for you're just looking for the pus in her uterus. But yeah, um, I would definitely get it diagnosed from a veterinarian because that is nothing. Because the yeah. that leads us into the next uh, the next portion of it. There's an open and a closed. You know what I mean? And if you don't know which one is which, you're gonna need a actual veterinarian to tell you the difference because uh, open is pretty easily uh, remedied with some 
medication. You know, they're probably going to put her on clapamox and enrofloxin together. Yep. And, you know, that will clean it out. Uh, there's only a few uh, antibiotics that can penetrate the uterine wall. And that's, you know, enrofloxin is one of them, you know, and Batril. Real quick, you made me just think of something now. This is just me thinking out loud, right? So let's say she has an open pyometra, right? Which open pyometra, like, as you said, is... She's dripping pus. Yeah, is much more treatable because the, yeah. every, it's her, her cervix is still open and that she can be able to... It can all come out. The pus... Out. Is, yeah, everything... The vault, for, for people to understand, the vault's not closed. The doors are open. The doors are stuck open. She yes. ain't pregnant because the doors are open. Yep, yep. So the pus is coming out, coming out, coming out. What it made me think of is... And this is just to pick your brain. What would it make sense to try flushing the female if she hasn't? I have. Pressure? I've me personally. I've flushed them with genomycin. Uh, even even with, when they had it, I've done a genomycin with saline with a sterile water, mix it together. And whoosh, mm. You know what I mean? With a, uh, uh, a TCI machine. That's what we've done. I had one. I had a dog. She was like one of my most valuable dogs in my opinion at the time, and. Uh, this one was a messed up, and this is how I found out she didn't have a cervix. Wait, what? Yeah, she was born without a cervix. So she, we thought she had a pio. I promise you, we thought she had a pio. Yeah. She could never take. She got real sick. Blah blah blah. We thought she had a pio. So we went to do a flush. We got it all mixed up. You know, one part genomycin. I think it was like two parts of, uh, sterile water. We got it all mixed up. Like we were about to do the AI. We got the scope in there. I mean, my vet's like, just kept going. He said, Chris. I said, what you mean? He said, uh, she ain't got the right tools to have babies. Wow. I was like, what? Wow. And she was born without a cervix. Wow. So, so that's why she never took. Her name so, was Tilly. Yeah. So there was no, there was like no, no, no dorsal. So she it was crazy, crazy man. Open? It just literally, I promise you, because this is what this is what made me take her to the vet. That when she came in the heat, I told the vet, look, we done, we done. I done tried regular AI too many times. We're going to do a, I mean, from day one, first time she comes in the heat, I'm going to test her and I'm going to breed her at home. That's what I told him. He was like, all right, cool. Day one, bro, she took the whole pipette and half the syringe. I was like, well, damn, maybe my timing is just really bad. Half the syringe. And, uh, oh. Half the syringe. Day one of blood. So I will tell you probably like, I'm testing her, I'm testing her. She's she's cycling normal and everything. Yeah. So we get time to the t down to the day where she's ready to be bred. And boom. I said, man, let's just flush her, blah, blah, blah. And uh, then we can in inseminate her and uh, nothing. It wasn't nothing in there. Wow. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. But he was willing to try something. I was like, nah, I'm cool. I'm just putting her in a home. She was amazing too, bro. I mean, absolutely gorgeous animal. But no, she didn't that's have no cervix. Wow, that's Whatever crazy. it is, cervix uterus. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she didn't have a cervix, bro. It was crazy. Yeah, and you, that's where you that's where it closes. And so yeah. we were willing, he, he was willing to bypass it and just inseminate her into the horns and then sew it shut. I'm like, nah, we ain't going to do all that. That's a little too crazy for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I no, mean, because it could be older, you know what I mean? That makes sense. And, and and then yet again, going back to what we were talking about with pyometra, that there, there's two different versions, right? So now, yeah. uh, one obviously being- You can flush them, going back to what your question was, flushing them. Yeah, you can flush them. That makes okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense. I have and you can put them on the antibiotics. You can put them on the antibiotics, and you know if you have a closed one. Here, here's what yeah. I told Andrew, and this is what I'll tell anybody. If you have a closed pyometria, you're about to tell on yourself for a few reasons. One, you're going to see if you have a really good relationship with your vet, because to fix a closed pyometria, it is risky. It is feasible. Uh, per the plums, you can look it up. There's a medicine called Lutalase. It has a really big name. Some people call it Estromate. Some all like, I mean, it has a bunch of different exactly. names, but to something crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It starts with a D uh, in the in the, tum, the plums book, but you can look up Lutalase. You can give small dose of Lutalase and basically it causes an abortion. That's what it does. So it makes the female go into basically an abortion. So where now the, the, the salt, the vault door is closed. You abort, you open up the vault, and you treat you treat the open pyometria because now she, in theory, has an open pyometria. But it is extremely, for lack of a better understanding, it's risky. You know what I mean? Because lutealase is a very 
very, very strong drug. And if you don't know what you're doing with it, I don't recommend you touch it. Now, you're going to have about 10% of your vets that will even help you. You know what I mean? So if you don't have a really good relationship with your vet, you can't just walk in off the street and say, hey, this dog got a closed pie. I meet you. I need you to save her. Oh, he, he, oh, he going to save her. He ain't going to save her breeding career, but he's going to save her life. He's going to rip everything out. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't have a good relationship with your vet, I can guarantee he ain't going to give her a shot of Lulu Yeah. And, and, and then back to what, what we have talked about, where it's like, for example, because I, I got to back over here. I had spoken to him about it and like, he said something similar to the effect of like, you know, you could try it, but he's like, this isn't something that I would, I would do for, you know, any, anyone else. And, uh, I won't do it. I will not do it. And I've had people ask me, Hey, what's the dosage? I'm not going to do it. I won't even it, give you the dosage. And that's what I was going to say is that even if someone like knew the dosage, for example, and like, you know, uh, what we have talked about where if you're off, like, by even the 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 smallest amount of milligrams. Point one yeah point one not one point no zero point one you're off by that much i'll just tell you she for lack of a better understanding she'll shit her insides out yeah yeah and i don't mean she push her uterus out yeah but but uh so i mean but that is an option and if you do your appropriate homework i mean um it it can save a female. They, they are savable. Yeah. Um, now that the, the thing is, is, if you can manage to save the dog from the closed pyometria, there is some side effects to that. The side effects are her fertility is not going to be as easy. Yeah. You're going to have to be, you know, the next time she comes in the heat, you're going to have to breed her. You're going to have to make sure she's cleaned out completely. You, Every time from that time forward, I would recommend to breed and see if she can take pregnant, get pregnant. And actually, you just reminded me, if she does, you know, say she does bounce back from a pyometra, and in my opinion, whether it's open or closed, you make sure you breed that dog so that then everything can come out. Because if you if, if you don't, I mean, I, I've had a scenario where we, you know, we didn't, didn't know any better and then it like came right back, you yep, know? So a lot of people don't want to hear this, especially the, the fur moms. A used uterus is a healthy uterus. Yeah. When you do not use that uterus, you are literally putting a ticking time bomb on it. Now, I'm not saying to breed the dog every single heat. That's not what I'm saying. You know, once you hit over about four or five years, you run the risk every single time she comes in the heat that she can get a pyometria. Yeah. Well, That's how we know it ain't from a pipette because they're more prone to get it over the age of five and if you ask your vet they will tell you the same thing and they will they will highly recommend if you're not going to breed her she's five years old that's spare yep yep and then like i have even reproductive specialists who and i'm quoting them and they even said like you do like the ideal situation is get your breedings done back to back and then be able to spay the dog so she can live her the rest of her nice healthy life you know just get them back to back done because if her uterus isn't being used. It's get. It's still taking a pounding. It's still going through all the changes as if she would have had the puppy. So you might as well just breed her, get all her breedings done, and then be go ahead and be able to spare her, you know, and she can be in a pet home or whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people all the time, a used uterus is a healthy uterus. Yeah. You know, yeah. just like you and I, if we don't use a certain muscle, rust equals dust, which means you're going to be, you know what I mean? That's what they say, <laughs> rust equals dust. So if you don't use it, you lose it. You know what I mean? That's the same thing in the results in regards to a uterus. If you're not using it, you're going to eventually lose it. And I have dogs here that are four years old that I've never bred. And my wife's over here like, yo, if you're not going to breed them, let's spay them and put them in a pet home. Yeah. Because there is that risk that she gets sick and she died from it. You know what I mean? And it's not worth it. And, and, and that's where, yet again, like, um, even with the pile, like what we were back to talking about, right? Open and closed pile meters. It's like... Um, I think you said it best that making sure you identify what type of pyometra you're dealing with, because yeah. I'll give you guys another example, right? I was dealing with a pyometra and uh, I thought me being uh, juvenile, I was thinking, no, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to knock this out. You know, I already got uh Clavimox, Batra, or whatever. I, I'm, <laughs> you already know where I'm going with this. I was like, I'm forget the vet. I'm taking care of this. And, uh, I made the symptoms go away for maybe a couple of days or whatever. Her, she, she still had a little bit of a fever, right? The minute yeah. she was off her medication or the dosage right started going back down, came right back. 
And it happened like, like maybe like two or three times when I was like, all right, I give up. You know what? Let me go to the vet and do what I need to do. And that's when I found out it was a closed pyometra. So that's where yet again, I can't stress enough. Identify what you're dealing with because open is much more manageable. In my opinion, an open, you can, you can treat at home, you know, if you have basic understanding of, you know, basic medicines. And I, I even would still give like, um, depending on how bad it is, I'll throw in some IV fluids, keep her hydrated, stuff like that, you know, which, which never hurts. Um, both really both types I'll, I'll throw in IV fluids, but the open so much more easier to treat closed. You can try to treat it at home. It, 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 unless you, unless yet again, like we talked about, unless you're going to, you know, go the Luda Ace method, which yet again, if you're not experienced with doing something like that, I wouldn't even recommend it, but otherwise it's, if it's closed, it's not going to go away. It's not going to go. No, away. it won't. And all you're going to do is build up a resistance. And the problem with that situation is that uh, enrofloxin, AKA Batril, it is the top of the food chain for us yes. for, for when it comes to dogs. So if this dog builds up a resistance to enrofloxin, we have no recourse. And that's what people have to understand. It do, a lot of times I know when I was juvenile in my breeding career, I would just use enrofloxin for everything. Yeah. But what I didn't understand is that I was legitimately building a resistance in the dogs because they're supposed to be on a cycle. Say it's 10 days, right? Yeah. If you don't finish that 10 days, that dog is building resistance yeah. to that medication. And now when you actually need it, say your dog has a, um, a prostate infection, a male has a prostate infection and he has to be on enrofloxin for a month. That ain't going to do anything because he's done build up a resistance to it. And that's one of the only medicines you can use to get rid of a prostate infection. So you have to be careful when you're using medicines, you got to follow through one and two, you kind of got to know what you're dealing with and knowing the difference between an open and a close is very, very important. I highly recommend taking it to the vet and then knowing the difference, at least yeah, it's a small a price. Is hey, very man. manageable. Like you said, I mean, an open is very manageable. Close is extremely difficult. We do have options, and that's all we're trying to get you guys to understand. You do have an option. It's Lutalase. And then once you open the vault, it's the same thing. You have an open pyometria. It's basically what you have. Um, and you can't, in my opinion, even the Lutalase method, like you can't, you know, these these vets aren't God. So you can't, you're hoping for the best, but you can't hold them accountable if things don't go necessarily perfect the way you, you want it. You can't go in with a dog damn near dying and expect them to fix it. You can't have a dog with, you know, a white blood count through the roof. She can barely stand up and you say, hey, just give her a shot of Lutalase. No, nah, it ain't going to work. He's going to, he took a Hippocrat Hippocratic oath, just like any other doctor. He can't put her life in danger. So if she is manageable, she's still up and you notice something's off, you're taking her temperature, something's not right, he'll do it. You know, what I tell people is, here's what I highly recommend. You get a sonogram or you find somebody like Angel or myself that knows how to do sonograms. And at 28 days, you check. You know, you check them early. Why? Because if they're pregnant at 28 days and you know that she had a pile last time, me personally, that's basically an abortion. You know what I mean? So there's something wrong with the uterus. So you have to make sure you keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on her. Make sure she's not getting sick. Make sure that if the case is the, you know, the matter is that she aborted or she had a, a, a pio, that you do what you need to do to maintain the pregnancy. Yep. You know, especially if you're breeding her right behind, there's a, there's a good chance that she get two of them right, right next to each other. So yep. make sure that she, if she's pregnant, you're doing what you're supposed to do to maintain the pregnancy. hundred percent. 100%. Because I physically, my wife will tell you, we've cut open a C-section. This is a true story. It was the nastiest thing i ever seen. She had one live puppy, two mummified puppies, and a pyometria. All at the same time. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I've never seen it. My vet's never seen it. He couldn't, I mean, the puppy didn't grow up to be anything. It was pretty messed up looking. But he lived. I mean, he's still alive. I'm, you know, he's in a pet somewhere, but he was scraggly looking. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he lived, you yeah. know what I mean? He lived, but I did not do my due diligence and I cost that dog her breeding career. Wow. Wow. See? Yeah. And, and yet again, that all comes down to, uh, there's no way around it. You're going to have to pay, you know, as far as, and I, and I tell people whether it's, you're going to have to pay your vet for what you don't know, 
or you're gonna have to dedicate some time to educate yourself in what you don't know. Either way, there's there's a cost associated with all this, especially with these dogs. So I mean, um, so so again, you can't say it enough. This is your best friend, brother. I promise you, this is your best friend. <laughs> exactly. Because uh-huh. no. that's that's how I knew. Like that's how I was able to. When I was dealing with the pyometra, right, and the dog, um, I was treating it at home, the, the, the one that had a closed pyometra. Um, that's how I was able to kind of gauge where I was at because, for example, when I knew she was bad, that's obviously when, I, when her numbers, she had the fever. Then when I was getting her better, or at least I thought I was getting her better, even though she had a closed pyometra, her fever started to go down. And then when I stopped the medication, the antibiotics were working. Yep. And then, and then when I would stop the antibiotics, it would go right back up and then put her back on. It was going right back down. So that's when I knew I was like, okay, you know what? This has to be closed. Something's not right because once she's off antibiotics, her temperature is going right back up. And that's like the best way to gauge if something, you know, something's up with your dog, check the temperature. You know, I agree 1 million percent. I'll be the first, I'll be the first to check them when they don't eat, you know, you can pay. I mean, we all know it. We all see it. We feed him every day. We know how he didn't eat his food. Check out why. He might not have wanted it. You might have fed him too much. I get all that. But make sure that's the reason he did not eat. 100%. And and actually, and, and that leads me to, so whenever I see people talk about pyometra, now this is this will get a little juicy, is that they don't mention the other metras that are out there. I'm making my own word right now. Metras. But, um, you know, like we've kind of talked about where, for example, there's hematometra, there's mucometra, there's hydrometra. So there's other, um, I guess you could say, um, elements that can be trapped inside the, the uterus as well. So I know you have a good explanation for, for example, the hematometra where she's pulling blood and you explain. So could, could you explain to them how that kind of usually comes about with the the pooling of blood? Oh, all four-legged animals, you know, because they stand on four legs, where their pelvic bone, you know, goes across horizontally, right in front of it is a reservoir, basically. And that's where the blood goes out. And it doesn't, because of the angle of the hips, sometimes it won't allow it to come out. If it's too steep, I mean, it won't come out. If it's too low, it just drips out. You know what I mean? It's 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 pretty uh, self-explanatory. But every that's why when we're doing AIs, we have to lift up just a little bit sometimes to get a straight shot. It's to straighten that out. And you that's see, all. And that's the same thing. You see it more and more with the m- more exotic type of dogs, right? The more bulldog type of dogs. Yeah. Yeah. See, I see. I love Absolutely. how he explains it. That's why I wanted him to explain it for you guys real quick. But um, so that's you know that's the point. Then you have the ones mm-hmm. you have the ones that you know feels like a cyst inside. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen them or felt them, and that's a um, what was it, Gina? It was a progesterone or estrogen. It's a bubble of estrogen. That's what it is. So, so you're talking about when you go in with your finger and it's like a big like lump, right? With, like you have to almost have to yeah. move it out of the way when you're AI. Yeah, the you got to push down on it, and some of them are super super sensitive, and they'll turn around on you. What's the scientific name of that? Do you know by any chance? Hyperplasia. I think it's called oh, hyperplasia. Oh, yeah. I heard June, I think, say that before. Hyperplasia. Yeah, because I remember he was AI and it was one of my dogs. And he said, oh, she's got, I, I didn't remember the name. But hyperplasia, yeah. yeah. And it's it's only a bubble of, uh, you know, hot, you know, basically a hormone. It's all hormones. Yeah. And as they, as they get closer to being ready, that, that bubble goes down. I had somebody, I had somebody who who showed it to me and they thought, I mean, they didn't really know any better, but they thought it was like a pie, uh, not pile, um, uh, a prolapse. And I explained to them, I'm like, nah, this, this, this couldn't be a prolapse. It's a, it's a, I explained it as like, it's a lump that they sometimes get when, when you're you're going. Well, I mean, it could lead to a prolapse. You know what I mean? A prolapse is basically prolapse means it's outside of the body. Hyperplasia means it's inside the body. I believe You hear this one? <laughs> so it's the swelling of the tissue is what the hyperplasia means. It's just that it makes it looks like a big fat finger in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nice. So that's that's another one, right? And then the other two is um, and these are all things that you like I said, you guys as females can very well get. Oh, we're getting our ten minute um, warning. Um, so the other two is like mucometra, 
which I've kind of seen where it's just like she has like some, you know, mucus on her, a little bit of mucus on her walls and stuff like that. Yeah, white is white. Yeah, I honestly, the most I see it, and I don't know if this is actually a confirmed, like a confirmed diagnosis for mucometra, but oftentimes I see like uh, a mucusy discharge after the female's been bred. Yep. And usually those females end up being pregnant. I've never That's really I tell people too that white clear mucus. Yes. I'm like, yeah. oh, she's pregnant. And I think it's the 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 wall accepting the puppies because you know the, the puppies stick to the uterine wall. Yes. When they're really small, is basically yeah, which makes which makes sense. But she can also, I mean, it she can also it, that doesn't necessarily mean she's pregnant, but it usually is. Or like for example, if you an indicator. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's an indicator, but that's sometimes i mean i have seen like once or twice that a dog had some some mucusy discharge and she wasn't even bred at all but it is definitely a good indicator because for the most part when after if, if it happens after we did the ai at least in my experience they've always usually been pregnant and then the last one which i've seen maybe once or twice is hydrometra and i don't have a whole lot of experience with it but what from what i've just seen with doing the tcis it's just like seem it just seems like excess like they they describe it i think is as water inside the uterus but to me i mean i've seen some uteruses that were for the tci just had a lot of uh moist i don't even want to say moisture but like i get a, a, a excess fluid i guess you could say i've yeah. seen that but it never really affected anything you know hey that roof of the mouth trick works don't it uh oh yeah 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 for the tci <laughs> we're gonna get into that we're gonna do that in another episode yeah. um but yeah, guys, I'll get I mean, I'll get but, but, but yeah, guys, so pretty much um, we're a little bit short on time, but as far as pyometra, you know, um, hematometra, mucometra, the list goes on, drop a comment, let us know your experience with it, you know, um, also drop a comment, let us know any questions you guys may have, any episodes you guys want to see us do, whatever the case may be, we're going to just keep continuously doing this every week, you know, so anyway, um, anything else? I think I think we pretty much covered Pyometra pretty good. What about you, man? Yeah, uh, that was pretty good. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, I can dig it. Yo, so all right, guys. So um, until we see you guys again on the next episode, um, the Dog Breeder Chronicles. I'll tap in with you guys. I'll see you guys later. All right. Uh-huh.